Coke Zero. I'm gonna start the video with me not being in the chair. Tested your piss for Coke Zero, you're fucked. Bro, if the if drug tests found diet soda, weed, and coffee, and that was like a fireable offense, society's cooked. I'm pretty sure that those are the three drugs that like keep the chains of industry moving. That and probably like construction workers who pack two beers in their lunchbox, and then <laughs> use heavy machinery for like six hours afterwards. <laughs> nah, bro, there's really serious rules against that. Yeah, but they're not up in the fucking, in the cherry picker with you, bro. You think I don't know? Come on. You got every once in a while, you got to be doing something up there. My piss is so caffeinated, they sell it at Panera. That's the, the start of a fire bar. You just gotta think of a perfect word that rhymes with Panera. And I don't have it in me right now. All I can think of is Dylan Sabara. Cholera, so close, that's a shape. We're almost there. Bam Margera, now that would work. I'm not willing to make the rhyme, but you could do it. Still got it. <laughs> Camara? Pamela! Barack Obama be like, my wife. First of all. Oh, man. It's really called Godzilla minus one, huh? I heard it's good, I'm just saying. It's named like a K-pop group. Can I say something as well? Kate and I, we watched, I don't know, a third of the first episode. <laughs> it's gonna hit too close to home for some people. But hey, that's what's funny about it, okay? Maybe, funny to me at least. Um, we are watching, so we finished Squid Game and then we said, what are we gonna watch? And there's this Korean show it's called like um, it, Life After Divorce or something like that. And it's basically like 10 Korean divorcees that have, they do like The Bachelor, basically. So it's kind of like Terrace House meets um, Terrace House. <laughs> it's a lot like Terrace House. Um, and I was thinking they, they have people in there, there's a wide range of age groups. They got a lot of guys in their, and, and women in their 30s and 40s that, you know, were married for like a few years and then got divorced. Then there was one dude who was married for like two weeks and got divorced and is in like his early 20s. And I think on like a normal reality show, that dude's in a position of power, right? This was my hunch. You may disagree. You'd be like, well, he was married, but like, it wasn't like a real marriage kind of like it he doesn't have that much trauma from it i guess as much as maybe someone who was married for, for longer so he's kind of like he's still sort of never been married like they weren't like real people they weren't supposed to be around in the area you know what i'm saying but i think like in a show like this where everyone is divorced i was like this dude's screwed because i just putting myself in the shoes of like a divorced woman which I mean, I wear a men's 12, so that's going to be tough to begin with. But I feel like you don't want to, you don't want your second marriage to be like to a guy who was only married for like two weeks. There's a lot of like, as a man, at least I feel like I went through like basic training. Like I, she, she bought low and she took me from a position of like life as a slob. And now I've got good habits, you know? 
I eat well, I take care of myself, I clean up after myself, I keep a clean house, I'm responsible, you know, and there's been dips and, and there's been peaks and valleys along the way that have smoothed out, but it took years, right? You can't be like a 37 year old woman and then be like, I'm gonna get with a guy who was married for two weeks. You're gonna have to do all that preparatory work all over again. It's like restarting your degree program when you're two courses away from getting your master's. Like, you really wanna teach him how to, I, he might be ahead of where I was, okay? But I'm just saying, you're really gonna teach him how to do the dishes again? You're really gonna try to change him so he doesn't have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight Coke Zero cans on his desk? Like that's, you already put in the work, bro. You should be like, you know, getting something that's already up to snuff. <laughs> You're gonna get ants, bro? I'm not gonna get ants, okay? It's not real sugar. <laughs> they don't eat this, right? Right? Do you not have a waste basket near your desk? Okay, this is a complicated one. I'm not making an excuse. It is too many cans on my desk. Um, I'm trapped. I did it to myself. But what happened is like, and I, I, I would like my wife, not like I'm, this is not anti, my wife, I'm just saying, back me up on the facts of the story. I try to put the cans in the recycling um, as frequently as I can. After we took out our recycling last week, like literally the next day, our recycling was full because there was like a bunch of like misshapen recycled cardboard in it. Like as soon as I took two cans out to the recycling bin, it was like, you can't fit any other cans in this. So I've been carrying recycling debt on my desk. Then, yesterday, my wife refactored the recycling bin. And as a result, there's space. So now I can put that, in. I can put the cans in there, but I just haven't had the opportunity since. The lady said no. Well, then she doesn't know. Did you or did you not refactor the recycling bin yesterday? Oppie, did you or did you not refactor the recycling bin yesterday? Get his ass, Kate? She can't. You know why I know she can't? Because the reason I haven't had time to recycle is because I was cleaning the whole house when our daughter was at a activity on Sunday morning. And every time I walked by my wife's office, what did I see on her screen? While I was swiffering the whole house, cleaning all of our glass surfaces, doing the dishes. Don't, don't say? Okay, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say. I'm just gonna say everybody deserves a chance to take the time that they need in order to um, like feel rested and refreshed because adult life is hard. You don't get a lot of breaks. I'm just saying, let's tell the truth. If we're telling the truth, let's tell the whole truth. Because I'm not getting roasted here for having eight cans on my desk. And then all of a sudden it's like, we're, we're negating all the effort that actually got put in, okay? Eight cans, man, come on. What is that like, you got 12 on your desk? Like, what's the problem here? You outed yourself? Yeah, that's why you don't join in. I'm capable of doing enough damage to myself. You know, I talk about my wife, like, so respectfully on this stream. And this is why, and librarian, you're not entitled to hear this part. This is why I say it's okay for a wife to make fun of her husband, okay? Instead of vice versa. Because I'm living it. I talk about my wife so respectfully. Sometimes I'll just be like eating lunch after my stream. I'm like, oh, it was a hard day's work. And then I go to my wife's stream and she's like, I cleaned his toilet. I almost threw up. It looks so bad. His shit was spackled to like the side of the bowl. I think he has a colon problem. Chad, does anybody else have this? And she's like airing out like my most private, like bodily functions. And I, without my consent, like it's not like she asked me, would this be okay to talk about? I'm just eating the sandwich. So I'm getting like screwed from both dimensions because I'm eating while she's talking about it. 
So, you know, and then I'm like, you know, it's, I mean, it's okay to play a little honk eye star rail on the weekend. That's what the weekend's for. And all of a sudden, I'm the bad guy? Does it make it make sense, dude? Me taking the hit. <laughs> Wives everywhere are like, take the shot. Clear. Let's get brunch. Target down. <laughs> As a wife, plus two. Let's go! Get out of there! Save yourself, bro! It's like the dude on the Peloton. As a husband, plus two. Man, wait, even DL Guiga's backing you up. You know you're spitting some truth. That's universal truth. He lives in the Midwest. I live in the uh, paradise of the coastal elites. He works in finance. I listen to the compound and friends. Like, we're, we're in very different sides of the world here. He speaks Portuguese. I'm monolingual um, by choice. Uh, and yet, some things unite humanity. And that's the truth. The truth is what unites humanity. She wears short skirts, so true. I wear long jackets. I took your Taylor Swift reference and I raised it by a cake. Anyway, Kate, the point is, I'm telling you, <laughs> the point was not about what we were doing this weekend. The point is about that dude on the divorce show. And I'm just like, I really feel like he's at a disadvantage. Again, this is just, I, I can't say this is what it's like. It's just simply my guess is that if you're a divorce woman in your mid-30s, you don't want to have to like retrain a husband from scratch. You want to pick up a husband who's like already gone through the preparatory materials and the basic training and he's gotten his certifications and his shots and stuff like that. What? Like, you don't want to start over with like a 23-year-old guy and then you got to find out that he like loads the dishwasher like a fucking idiot, right? You've already done the work on that one. Dating in your 40s sounds hard. Well, first off, I wouldn't know for two reasons. But secondly, People in their 20s are always like, dating in their 40s sounds hard. How do you date in your 20s? Oh, he's got a cool bracelet. Okay. <laughs> he got an Aperol spritz. I thought that was so cool. It's all fucking bullshit, bro. It's... You do you. Yeah, but that's the thing, man. More men are wearing bracelets than eating stew these days. Hey, NL, why do you expect women to train men? Because I know a lot of single men in their 30s, and like, most of them are not <laughs> consistently making decisions that are good for their overall... The, like, the incentive for a man when he lives alone, not with everybody, but like, with, the, with a lot of men, I think, who have never been married, is like a tendency towards self-destruction. It helps to live with someone who's like, you know, please don't, please take care of yourself because otherwise, like, we're going to have a problem. It day, day to day pushes you in a direction to, like, better yourself and it 
helps put some backstops there so you don't backslide too much when things get bad. If you got nothing, you got, you got no bumpers on the side, like your ass can easily find yourself in the gutter for years and years. I guess. What would you say about a 30-year-old single woman? I wouldn't say anything because I don't know any. <laughs> I have no idea, quite frankly. Right answer? Well, it's not like it's a trap question. It's just like... Actually, like 99% of my friends are men, <laughs> and most of them are single. Not single, but unmarried. You don't know any 30 plus single women? I honestly know. I don't think, well, my grandma. <laughs> That's because my grandpa died like 13 years ago. And she's loving every minute of it, Jerry. Like there was some mourning, but now she's having a good time. She's not 30. You said 30 plus. She's like 74, okay? That's 30 plus. Last time I checked. You gotta watch some number blocks, bro. Yeah, yeah, good for her. My grandfather, I think, was not a good husband. I love him because he is my grandfather, but like I think, you know, that's kind of like grandfathered in, if you will. Maybe that's why they named the term that. I, it's not, it's just a pun, like everyone relax. I'm not going out for like, you know, I'm not trying to get five mics off of that joke. But like, where would I meet a, a 30 plus single woman at this point in my life? The only people I hang out with are like my family and other parents. <laughs> Brunch? Yeah, this is Vancouver. DL Guiga, back me up. No, strangers don't talk to each other in Vancouver. They're minding their own business. He's right. I will say, because I think that people, they often accuse me of being too sexist towards men. It happens all the time. In order to keep it fair, I have to add amusing about uh, women. Sorry, it's just the way that it is. All I'm gonna say is that a man's, a single man's life in his 20s is much more likely to be self-destructive than a single woman's life in her 20s. In my admittedly anecdotal n equals one experience however what's crazy is that in my experience a man's bathroom in his 20s is a lot cleaner than a girl's bathroom in her 20s i know we've been down this road before i had to think of something to even the odds here there's something about i get it society has got you using all sorts of different products um but you just go in and there's like 12 shampoo bottles on the tank of the toilet and like there one of them's got like blue liquid coming out of the top one of them's got pink liquid coming out of the top it's just and it, it, sure maybe the joke is actually on men because at age 22 we're all using like the 8 in 1 soap shampoo conditioner energy drink you know like multivitamin body wash but it does make it it does make it less cluttered. <laughs> you can't deny that. Oh! Half empty bottles aren't dirty. Yeah, but they got the drip on this. You know what I'm talking about. And like the Tresemme bottle is like open and there's like a little goo coming out of the top of it that's run down the side. You know, the Guiga, you know what I'm talking about. Don't play it cool, I know. We both know. We know about the shampoo goo, bro. Back me up on this one.
you wouldn't know, Baldi. It's true. I mean, it's my bathrooms were like dirtier than they should be, considering that I didn't even have any hair. But like, the bathroom of a balding man is crazy, though. That's probably true. I, with in all honesty, I think it's cool that there's like it's more accessible for men going through hair loss. They have like options now, whereas like. When I was going through hair loss, it was basically like be bald or shave it. Like those were your options. Or get it like a fucking toupee or something. <laughs> like with 18 year old showing up for biology 101 with a, with a damn hair piece on. Morty's wigs. Um, sure, we take. Forgot. Forgot you never take that. But also, I feel like... In a way, I feel blessed that the decision, the conditions that I made my decision in were a lot simpler. Because like these days, if you're a man going through hair loss, you might be paralyzed by choice. You know, should I go to Turkey and get a hair transplant? Should I get like this medici medicine with this side effect? Should I take that medicine with that side effect? Should I, you know... When I was... 19 and I kind of decided like enough is enough. It was really like, you know, unless you got I don't know like 10 grand for a hair transplant then You it's that or it's a Little shaving cream and a razor which you probably have to begin with like it, it kind of made my decision for me There was no cope involved because there was no other option. So in that way, I think it was, maybe it's turning a, a, a negative, a perceived negative into a perceived positive, but, you know, it's kind of like, well, there's no point in, like, dilly-dallying, like, these are the, this is the situation, let's send it, you know, the longer you wait, the worse it's going to be. This medicine was available 40 years ago. Yeah, 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 but you can't like, <laughs> let me put it this way, nobody was taking it. Maybe if you were like, no 19 year old on the planet was taking it. That's probably not true, but nobody I knew was taking it at, at that point at least. What medicine are we talking about? Uh, penicillin. I'm just seeing if you bought it. I knew someone who was balding in high school. Mouth be like... See, you're gonna think, why are you making a bald joke about mouth? I'm not! I'm saying Malf knew me in high school. I was losing my damn hair. Northern Lion stream ending explained. New media rock stars. You know what's crazy, though? Is that it's like, it's really not crazy. Because when you think about it, like, yeah, I went bald at... I, I probably started balding at 16, but I really noticed like 17, 18. That's things. You really do be your own sometimes. But like, I am just the latest entry in like the franchise of my genes, right? So obviously like the way that the phenotype gets expressed is different based on the underlying genotype. But like probably my grandpa on my mom's side was balding when he was like 18, 19, 20 or something like that. And his ass was never like, oh, it was hard. He was like fucking, you know, Lots of shit was hard back then. I guess it was different, like, optically, because you got married when you were, like, 15 years old. But still, it's like, I never heard him complain about it once. He wasn't even that old. Like, I mean, he was... Probably would have been in his early 60s when I was, like, 10.
This is just, you know, they were just like, ah, this life. And they didn't even shave their head back then. So dude would be like 22 years old rocking the horseshoe. Can you imagine? Senior vice president of his company got the job just by walking in and firmly shaking the owner's hand. Worked there for 77 years. That's true. They did wear more hats back then. What is it about, like, like the fedora has been uncool for a really long time now. Like, at minimum, since the swing revival in, like, the 90s, right? Probably before then. But when you look at people, like, in the 50s and 60s that were wearing them, they were looking fucking cool, bro. So what is it about the fedora now that's so much worse? Is it because people are trying to use it as a, as a shortcut to be like, I'm well-dressed and classy without actually committing with the rest of the outfit? Is it like fedora plus graphic t-shirt plus sweatpants is like the, is that the, is it a principal element there? That's part of it. I will say, oh, I would do this in a heartbeat, bro. What are we doing here? <laughs> I, um, Kate will tell you this is true. I made a bold decision as a, as a 35 year old man. I had a, uh, a shirt in my closet that I didn't know where it came from. Either like my mom gave it to me for Christmas at some point, or like maybe I bought it for myself and then was like, I'm not sure if this shirt is really like what I'm looking for. Um, and I was like, you know what? Today's the day I'm gonna try it on. It, Cause it's, it is the season. It's a flannel button up shirt. I put it on and Kate said, what is that shirt? And I said, I don't know. Like I didn't take offense to it cause I was looking at myself in the mirror, like what's going on with this. And, but it wasn't like a, an oversized flannel shirt in keeping with the, style of our time it was like a fucking tight ass flannel shirt like it was and i'm a relatively skinny guy compared to at least where i used to be like this shit was fucking tight bro um she said at the very least you gotta tuck it in okay so i tucked it into my um to my lululemon navy blue slacks um and i was like, this doesn't feel like me. Uh, but I said, sometimes it's like that, right? Sometimes you try on, you get a new haircut. You know, it's been a while since I had this experience, obviously. But you get a new haircut and you're like, I look stupid. Then you wake up the next day and you're like, oh, actually, I really like it. Um, so I said, I'd try it. I went out, we had to run some errands in the morning. Went out, came back home, looked at myself in the mirror and said, I straight up look like a cowboy. Like, I, I look like someone who would say, like, you yeed your last ha. But because of the Lululemons, there was also, like, a little, like, metrosexual element going on that was, there was, like, a discordant vibe. It's like the outfit was discordant with itself, and it was discordant with my personality. And I was like, this is just not gonna work. So then I took it off, and I put on something more me. Um, and then I put the shirt back in the closet. I don't know what that's for, though. I put it back in the closet as if to be, like, Maybe one day. <laughs> I don't know if I should be diplopying this, but... I was like, I'm not gonna throw it out. I've only worn it once, bro. Use it unbuttoned with a shirt. You really think it would work well on top of the Hurley? On top of the Kirkland signature Eddie Bauer? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Kate will tell you if she's still here. It was not. Well, she did say, why'd you change? And then I was like, I just don't think it was working. And then she was kind of like, eh. Like, yeah. It's a good, good try. Like, you got to try it sometimes. You got to give it a shot. You should be a vest guy. 
I think that's where I'm going. I think I'm, I think I'm evolving into Patagonia Vest. I think that's my next step. I do like to be outside, which is something I never thought I would hear myself say. Um, it seems in keeping with the rest of, of my lifestyle. Well, I guess we should. Can you have a hiking era? I think I would like hiking. It just seems like there's lots of great hiking in Vancouver. It just seems crazy to me to like drive your car to like a hiking trail. Like it's it's like like smoking a cigarette on the treadmill or something like that. It's like that's something I, and I shouldn't let that stand in my way, I guess, but it's a long trip to the damn mountains if you're going to take a bike, I guess. You got to get there somehow. He's always got to say something. That's, that is my number one foible, Chibli. You got me. I do always be got to say something. Take the sea bus? You're not going to catch my ass at Waterfront Station at 8.07 a.m. on a Saturday, okay? That's when my child gets up. I can't be hobnobbing with society's elites at that time, okay? By the way, I had a great moment, okay? So, anybody here who's a parent in an area, and I'm, this is not coastal elite talking. If anything, I'm complaining. Everything's fucking crowded. Everything involving kids is crowded, okay? Maybe it's not just Vancouver, but like, daycare is always fucking like you're on a wait list. Uh, after school programs, you're on a wait list. Any, any kind of activity, you're on a wait list, right? So I had heard from other parents. Our daughter is, she's basically just turned three. So this is the first cycle of community center activities where um, she's actually been able to go to the ones that are for toddlers. Because previously they're like, oh, sorry, she's only 2.97. She's like not allowed to go to this. Okay, so now she's old enough for the ones that are starting in January. So I picked out a class for her at a, at a community center, and I was like, I'm going to be there Saturday, 9 a.m., online sign up. I'm going to sign you up 100% for this class. There's like not many spots, and it's very competitive, so we're going to, it's first come, first serve. We're going to be there. We got fiber, no sweat. I'm always up at that time anyway. Long story short, my ass forgot, okay? So... About an hour and a half after signups opened, Kate said, aren't you going to sign up for that one class? And I said, oh, son of a bitch. And then I uh, went to the online registration and it was like, it's full. But they kept some spots. There's where the story goes. The online registration is full, but they keep some spots for like in-person and phone registration. So then I phoned and I was like, hi, I'd like to register for course number, blah, 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 blah. And they were like, oh, phone registration doesn't start until like next Monday. So you can come into the uh, community center if you want and we'll sign, we'll register you there. And I swear to you, I said, I said, I'm at his mercy, right? So I said, sure, that sounds fine. Dude said, okay, good luck. Click, it was like the, is taken with Liam Neeson. That shit was rattling around in my brain. So then I told my wife, I was like, I guess we're taking this. I told my wife, um, hey, I got to go to the community center. And she said, yeah, go ahead. I'm driving there the whole time. Like, I know this shit is not going to work out, okay? There's 0% chance. Like, when I looked at the course calendar, I was like, every parent is going to be signing up for this class. No doubt. So I get to the community center, the parking lot. It's like... 10.07 a.m. on a Saturday, and the parking lot is jammed. Bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic like a Costco. People are waiting, like, in line for spots. I pull over to the side of the parking lot, get, like, street parking, get out, pay, pay for the parking on my phone. I'm, like, jogging into the community center. I get to the community center, and there's, like, a 30-person deep lineup. And there's a dude—I've never seen this before. There's a dude with a headset— like running the McDonald's drive through who's like directing traffic and people are like, how's your day going? And he's like, it's crazy today. It's like swimming class sign up or something like that. And I'm like, this is insane. I'm like, we're fucked. We're fucked. 
Anyway, I start filling out the form in the line. Like he gives me the form. I get to the front. I'm like, I want to register for this class. I'm 100% sure the lady's going to laugh at my face. Instead, she types for eight minutes and then she goes, okay, do you want an emailed receipt or like a printed receipt? And I was like, oh, emailed receipt is good. And then, you know, in Meet the Parents, when, probably not, but um, when Greg Fokker gets a fake jinxie from the pound and paints a stripe on it and he brings the carrier back when the family's at their lowest and then he's like i got it and he's like slapping the case and everybody's like jinxie that's how i felt when i got home i was like there was zero percent chance we were gonna get it and then we got it i really did feel like the the image of the dude mining but giving up before he gets the diamonds. Every gambler is just one more swing away from hitting that jackpot. It was exhilarating, man. And then I told my daughter and she was like, I don't want to do that. And I was like, well, too bad, you're three. If you were like 15, I'd be like, all right, we'll cancel. But you're three, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't even... <laughs> Literally, what I signed you up for, you just found out that it existed, like, 15 minutes ago. So, we're not going to be doing that. Sorry, you're three. That's about all I got, though. Ratioed plus you are three. This run kind of blows. Yep. Anyway, Poop Deli. So true. They really should do a Costco wrap, dude. I was thinking about that. One of the very few things I'm not cynical about is wraps. Like, I feel like they're always fun. Even when they kind of suck, it's always nice to see, like, a year encapsulated and collated and sliced in a couple of different ways. They already got all our data, bro. We're scanning our card at checkout. People are paying on, like, Costco credit cards and stuff like that. Just show me what I... Like, the, the breakdown. I want to see... My free sample of choice at the Costco. Spoilers, it's chocolate-covered acai berries. And you will not catch me waiting for the Tropicana orange juice unless there's nobody else there. Speak for yourself, I'm all cash. The, the older I get, the more I respect that. Aw, oh, son of a bitch, I needed that deal with the devil. It's not even like, um... I'm worried about them tracking me. It's more just like, we talked about it before. I feel like when you pay with cash in the modern era, you're basically just maliciously exercising a human right, which I respect. It's like, I'm going to pay you in this way that is like the least convenient way for both of us, but you're sticking to your principles. It wouldn't be me. I will be paying using a digital wallet connected to a credit card on my phone. Check is worse. Well, they don't do that here anymore. <laughs> I am old enough to have witnessed people paying with checks in grocery stores, but it's, it's been probably like 20 years. Cash is way faster than card. No disrespect, um, but your clientele is old. You would catch, I have my digital wallet ready to go before the last item is even scanned and I hold it up so that they don't even have to say like how would you like to pay I'm paying on card I'm 35 years old I got my phone out I'm wearing a fedora you know I'm technologically literate as soon as the reader pops up ding we're done that's it I know it might take a couple of extra seconds for like the process to you know ping back to the servers does this guy have enough money in his debit account but I, I would put myself with my Samsung digital wallet up against anybody with cash. But I do see sometimes at the grocery store is a rude bit. I apologize. I'm sure I'll be there one day myself. Um, see people at the grocery store 
And it's like, the grocery clerk is like, how do you want to pay? And they're like, card. And then like the card reader goes beep and it pops up with like, please insert your card. And then they go like, oh, and then they like go through their purse to get their credit card. And I'm like, you forgot about that part, huh? Like we could just be doing one simple thing to make everybody's life a little, you just be ready, you know, like. It's okay, it's not a big deal, but. It happens too often. I, I try to be the change that I want to see in the world. I'm not saying I've never messed up on the card reader, but I do try to be quick about it. It's easy too, because you just hit the no tip button no matter where you are. I, I forgot, I fucking hate this dude. Fuck you, fuck you. Bro, do some damage, bro. Do something. I'm joking. That being said, I do hit the no tip option at lots of places. Not not traditional restaurants, service based locations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but well, I told you about the time I went to the liquor store and when I checked out, it was like, "Would you like to leave a tip?" And I was like, "What? You didn't do anything." I got the shit, I brought it to the front. You clearly did not make the stuff. I'm pretty sure that your name is not Jack Daniels. Like, what are we doing here? What do you want a tip for? Like, I'm not, I, mean, I guess I, everybody wants a tip, myself included. Because it's money, but like, you didn't, you didn't do anything. You're just existing. Like, this is just com, this is commerce. Yeah, I tip for takeout. I don't know. As much as people will... I'm probably the most based guy in the world. I guess it's like what I'm trying to say. Well, we take those. And then we... Okay. You tip for takeout? Let me explain my methodology. I've always tipped a little bit for takeout. I think like even in college, I would tip like 10%. Not as much as in store. But I would, I would tip for takeout. And... Part of it is just being honest with myself. I'm already tipping for no reason other than the fact that if I don't tip, people will be mad at me. It's not like when I sit down in a restaurant, I'm like, oh, you're doing like the really hard work of refilling my glass of water and like carrying the plate out to me. Like that stuff is, I'm not saying it's not work. I'm just saying like it doesn't bring much value to me personally like if they just put the plate out at the front and said your food's here like i got no problem walking up and getting it myself so on an intellectual level i'm already tipping for no reason whatsoever i'm tipping because it's the custom of the place where i live so it's just honest for me to tip on takeout because i'm not really paying you to fill up my glass of water anyway i'm paying you because that's what you do when you go out to a restaurant is you tip it's what we've all agreed upon whether via inertia or, you know, whatever other reason. But then, after COVID, I also started tipping more for takeout because I want the businesses in my neighborhood to continue to exist and not just be replaced by Cactus Club, Earl's, etc., etc. So I've started tipping like 20% sometimes even a little bit more for takeout at local businesses because I want the business, if possible, to have every chance to survive longer and not just become like the next Boston pizza or something like that. So, and then if it goes out of business, it's not like I'm gonna be like, oh, I really wish I could get those tips back. I'll be like, ah, well, you know, it's the, it's the way of the world. Either way, you're supporting, you know, like uh, people in your community. Which is why I don't tip when I eat at restaurants in America. Because I don't live there. So it's not really like, it's not going to enrich my local environment as a result. I just don't care. I'm just, I'm there for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> if, <laughs> if those restaurants go out of business, what do I, I may never be in Bellingham ever again. I'm joking. I mean, I may never be in Bellingham ever again. God willing, but I do tip as well in the United States of America because I don't want to get killed, okay? Like, there's always a good reason to tip. There's lots of, you don't want them to fuck with your food, you know, it's a nice thing to do because, like, the legislation is written in such a way that 
They don't even get minimum wage. They get like a quarter of minimum wage, which is crazy. But I've like never tipped for good service. There have been times that I've eaten at like a restaurant that was really fancy. And while tipping, I was like, this tip hurts. But you did give me great service. <laughs> It's like when you go out for like a really nice meal and then you do like the 20% math and you're like, holy fuck, that's like two meals in and of itself just on top. But then you're like, they, they were very nice. Librarian be like, did you see that house explode in Arlington, Virginia? Of course. I don't see what that has to do with what we're talking about right now necessarily yes i did see the house explode in arlington virginia just curious <laughs> fair enough fair enough can't be mad at you <clears throat> where were you on that day Fucking same place I always was. Either here or like at my local grocery store. Tipping my landlord. On the Peloton or at the Costco? So true. Did you see my ass explode? Ghibli, why are you talking like a, a Twitter blue check? That's not fair, that's too rude. <laughs> she just wrote, do you wanna fuck me? <laughs> it's free! I respect them for their online modeling career. I don't respect the use of AI to game their way to the top of the Twitter replies. You got me all confused. A lot of people are saying NL doesn't support sex work. That's not true. I don't support robots, okay? It's a slight difference. It's a market difference, in fact. Do you know about Grok? Me in the, uh, the sewing circle in the caveman days? <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. Oh my god, did you guys hear about Grok? He lost his job at the fucking rock factory. Drama! <laughs> hey, did you- I don't know if this is true, by the way, because I got it from the Twitter algorithm, so it could be a disinformation campaign designed to undermine my faith in society. But it, let's assume that it's true, because it's easier that way. It's lower friction. Did you see that previously, um, archaeologists, I don't know whether this is the right term, maybe historians, thought that the earliest known use of uh, humans using lumber to construct a structure was like 10,000 years ago. And then they unearthed like a custom-made wooden beam connected to another wooden beam via a notch that they dated to like 265,000 years ago or something like that. That's fucking crazy, bro. In the caveman days, they were building Lego? It was actually 470,000 years ago. All right, if you're fucking in love with C14 dating or whatever. Like, I don't... Listen, I'm trying to bring this information to the masses, okay? Some stuff might get lost in translation. Sure, maybe I'll... Do, maybe it's not cavemen. Maybe, though, that's just because it's prehistorical doesn't mean there was cavemen, NL. I don't know about all that shit, okay? I'm out here playing Isaac. You try playing Isaac and making groundbreaking discoveries at the same time. It's not as easy as you'd think, okay? What's the source? Um, Pizza Monkey on Twitter. Blue check with the name, holy shit, history's crazy. <laughs> it's so sad to see people posting their like Twitter earnings lately, man. 
I'll admit, like anybody else, when they made the first payment to blue checks and some of the big meme accounts were like, holy shit, I just made $17,000 in the last two weeks tweeting. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I gotta, I'm not gonna get a blue check, but I could easily start an account that's like, you know, sports highlights. <laughs> And just steal the shit that Barstool already stole from the original broadcaster and then just, you know, cash the checks. But now seeing it and people are like, some people are spending all day trying to like farm engagement on Twitter. And then they're like, check it out, stay mad haters. And they're making like $92 bi-weekly. I'm like, man, we're, it's cooked. It's, it's over. The economics just don't make sense. Anyway. <clears throat> Steve Jobs. Who he really was. So true, dude. On the one hand, Steve Jobs invented the iPhone. On the other hand, he's also like patient zero for founder brain. So I don't know. You, I guess you got to take the good with the bad. Chibli, is that real, by the way, that you said his last words were... Um, get away, your breath smells disgusting. Because when I googled it after, embarrassingly enough, to fact check it, it's like, according to his official biography, his last words were like, oh my god, or something like that. But I want to believe that it was, get away from me, your breath smells disgusting. Or your breath smells like a trash can, or whatever. <laughs> I did ask you something. I did ask you if Steve Jobs' last words were actually get away from me, your breath smells disgusting. I don't want to know my last words. I don't really care what my last words are. I also saw a great tweet, by the way. I, I was thinking about this. It's not like I'm dunking on the tweet or, or I'm believing the tweet wholesale. But it was like, here's uh, from a, a palliative care nurse. Here's the top five regrets people have on their deathbed. And it's always like, not speaking my mind. Uh, I shouldn't have worked so hard. You know, blah, 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 blah. And then the, the quote tweet was like, people are very biased when they're about to die. So I don't trust this. And I was like, you know what? I'm paraphrasing what they said. But I'm like, I think that's fucking true. Just because you're about to die, that doesn't make you like an authoritative source on how you could have made your life better. It's not like you necessarily get struck with like an extreme moment of clarity and you're like, oh, I could have solved all my problems. Like, I, It changes your perspective, but like, like maybe there was times you didn't speak your mind as much because you were fucking like gonna get fired if you spoke your mind. Maybe there was times that you worked harder than you should have because you needed to make your damn mortgage payment so like your family had a place to live and stuff like that like i i think you gotta take like the you gotta ask them what their regrets are like every 10 years and then collate that into so like tell me what someone who's like 30s regrets are and then compare them to the regrets at 40 and then compare it to the regrets at like 90. I'm not willfully taking IBS. It'd be disrespectful to my friend Chibli. I'm not saying I'd be like, oh, Grandpa, sorry. Like, you're really biased right now. I can't take your opinion seriously. I'm simply saying I don't look at that and say, like, oh, there's inherent actionable wisdom that I could apply to my own life. Because I think if I, well, A, I'm already not working that hard, <laughs> to be honest. But I think if you look at that and you're like, oh, I should start working, like, less hard. It's entirely possible when you're on your deathbed, you're like, man, I should have worked like a little harder. I shouldn't have taken that advice so seriously, bro. My ass got a little lazy and I suffered as a result of it. Clip it before he calls me lazy again. Who are you? 
Can't just ask the librarian to clip. I'm the person who asked the librarian to clip things. Only me and the librarian have that kind of like jurisdiction, okay? And fauna, sure, and fauna. I'm just pretending to be part of the team. I don't really know what's going on with all that. But I know when I say fauna, people go, fauna! <laughs> it's hard to uh, resist the, the call, you know? <laughs> Look at that, Silly Rice Krispie gifted five subscriptions. Thank you so much, thank you, I appreciate it. Holy cow, it's 12, 1240 already. We will not be losing Isaac today. Hey, Librarian, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Oh, tears down? You did that. You did that. I'm just kidding. If you ever need chat to move fast, just ask if you would eat a poop sandwich for $10 million. I, I mean, I have a compromised gut biome. Wow, you're right. It even got me talking about it, and I knew that was what it was designed to do. I have a compromised gut, and I would eat a poop sandwich for $10 million, for sure. Like, the guys on Jackass are doing that shit, and a lot of it is exactly that bad. And they're doing it for less than $10 million. Maybe $10 million lifetime, not a lump sum payout. Hey, Rex Mechanica, thank you for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you. And Gel King Goonbird. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. You got me on that one. <clears throat> me when uh, Matt Wilpers shouts out my cock so big for their 1,000th ride. Oh, man. Like, there's the one in, in Jackass 4.5 where Steve-O tries to do the thing where you put... Uh, you, like, drop a, a water-filled condom on your head and then it, like distorts your face and looks really funny but he did it with the septic tank from his mobile home that was just filled with old piss and shit so he kept filling up the condom and then like they drop it on his head but it would snap and just coat him in his own waist and they did it for like three hours and it never worked like if steve-o can do that for a bit that didn't even work, I would eat a poop sandwich for $10 million. I think anybody that didn't would be insulted. I honestly... I would like apply. <laughs> if it was like, we'll give some lucky person, they would be like the lottery. People would be like killing each other to be the person who eats the poop sandwich, bro. Now you got me pissed off. I'm thinking about the Squid Game reality show again. They all think they're Orbit on that show. Hey, what if we didn't play the game and instead we just all picked a number and whoever picked the cursed number goes home instead? Fuck you, man. Play the... You got people at home. Like, I get it. You're trying not to lose your humanity on a reality show. My ass is trying to, like, get some entertainment value out of the show. Fuck me, I guess. Do you have to finish it? Well, I already finished it. <laughs> and it sucked. I'm an Orbit hater. That's what I think is great about the show. You're gonna have strong opinions about Orbit and Suck Jin, okay? But the thing is, like, you could see yourself being a, a supporter of either of them if you were on the show. It was a great battle of, like, the reality show ideologies. The based competition enjoyer versus the based game theory understander. It made for incredible entertainment, one way or the other. It's like, usually a villain on a reality show is like, just kind of like a mean person, which is totally fine because it's a game anyway. Or they're just like annoying, <laughs> like they don't do anything. <laughs> Or they're like, what was Roxroy from that season of Survivor, who is his whole role on the island was just to say, like, good hustle. Pick it up. Come on, guys. Pick it up. Pick it up. We can get this done before sunset. Pick it up, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
But like on the devil's plan, there were kind of like two heroes. And society drew the lines that made them go against one another. It was two competing philosophies. Remember that episode of Survivor where the dude was like, do you want to see my monkey run? And then he started running around like a damn gorilla. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, we won again. Okay, I'm going to go to the bathroom. When we get back, we should play like the dull.